I'm going to relaunch and see how it goes. All right, guys, we're trying this again. Let's see if this gets up and works <clears throat> this time. And uh, let me come back over here and uh, bring up a page and go through all this rigmarole. And, uh, okay, so, so. okay, and it says I'm live. <laughs> Yay. Yep, there you go. All right. Ooh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop the link. Yeah. Please do. Let me just share this again. I usually say we are live. This time I'm going to say we are alive because I'm clever. Clever. Foylan. Foylan. There you go. All right. Let's share this out all over again. <laughs> All right, it seems to be working. That was weird. It happens sometimes, though. Yep. All right, well, uh, for those of you coming back, uh, we do apologize. Don't know what to tell you. Uh, sometimes, uh, uh, you know, uh, YouTube is that way, isn't it? And uh, uh, we just have to deal with it. Because, uh, you know, that's the thing I found interesting about uh, YouTube. I, I wonder if they give notification to the big boys and say, hey, we're doing this today. Because they don't tell the rest of us, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They, 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 they do that kind of stuff all the time. Yeah, yeah. Deja vu. Hey, Jennifer. Uh, but, uh, yeah, at least I'm getting chat is coming <laughs> in, but I'm not getting viewer response. Uh, but that's all right. Uh, you guys know when we do the D&D &D stuff, we don't we don't have time to pay m much attention uh, to what's going on in the chat, uh, which, you know, we do apologize for that. But it is what it is kind of busy. Uh, I do want to check one thing, though, if you guys can do me a favor. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play some music right now. And I want you to tell me, one, can you hear it? And two, is it loud? All right. So let me go ahead and do that while people start uh, funneling back in, and uh, uh, let's see how let's see how this goes here. All right. I'm starting it up. I don't hear anything. No, you guys wouldn't hear it anyway. I'm talking about them. Oh. Okay. That's at like half volume. And that's at full volume. So just tell me, guys, in the chat if you can uh, if you can hear it. That's what I need to know. Lady Celtic Moon says we hear you now. I know you hear me, but do you hear the music? That's what I need to know. The music, music, music. Yeah, there's music. There is music. You can hear it. There is. Is it yeah. still going? Oh, your full volume is way too loud. Oh, I thought so. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I figured so. Yeah. <laughs> the half volume is perfect. Uh, it, you, you can still hear you. That's but good. When you turned it up to full volume, it was just like. <laughs> but they can hear. Yeah, I figured it would be. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you guys can hear me even uh, when I. Uh, it's not inter uh, intermittent. It's 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 continuous, right? Mm-hmm. Just, uh, just checking, because when I uh, is it? Because I'm hearing it in my headphones, but are they hearing it? Yes, music is still going. Rock on. What do you think, Bob? Is that uh, is that a good volume? Uh, I can't hear anything. <laughs> Whoever was listening, uh, who was that? Yeah, no, that's fine. That's a good volume because you can still hear you. And oh, stuff. sweet. All right. So. Excellent. Sweet. Awesome. Test successful. Now that's nice because that gives me access to literally thousands of D&D songs that I can play while we do stuff. Isn't that neat? I like it. That's I love the 21st century. The 21st century is <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Not really here on uh, half uh, half that uh, might just be me. Well, you know, I can adjust it up from half to 3 quarter I would say uh, cuz we want it in the background. Uh, we don't want it really to be overwhelming at all. Uh, so uh, Roger's saying it's really good, and uh, at certain points, maybe I'll bring it up to about three-quarter. Uh, but I, f I figured full would be very hard, uh, high. But uh, awesome. Rock on. Uh, let's uh, let's go ahead and jump into this now. Now, what I'm going to do is, uh, with these guys, 
Uh, ooh, don't do that. Uh, I'm going to uh, share this uh, screen that I'm going to be using here. So if you guys want to see what I'm showing the folks, uh, just go ahead and white box me, okay? Uh, if you guys in okay. the chat. But uh, I'm going to go I'll go ahead and uh, <clears throat> I'm going to start uh, doing my introductions. You guys ready? I'm uh, ready. Real quick, if you wanted to check my uh, screen there, there's what I got so far for my characters. Yeah, and I saw oh, that. Cool. Looks good, dude. Looks good. All right, here we okay. go, guys. Yeah. <sighs> okay, I gotta try. I gotta turn my DM on. Let me see here. Okay, <laughs> where's that switch? Oh, there it is. All right, here we go. Welcome to the Moonshe Isles. Seraphal is the center of conflict and war. The Eldrin have returned 15 years ago, throwing the Isles into chaos. But of course, all of the Forgotten Realms and Faerun in particular have been in chaos ever since. We had the spell play come and ending 15 years ago, ironically with the return of the Eldrin and many other uh, interesting things across the realms. But the Eldrin did not come back with the image and the legend that the elves, particularly the Laywer elves, thought that they would. The Eldrin came back with fire in their hearts for a demand that this land, which was theirs, that they say they rose from the ocean, not unlike Evermead itself, uh, is their land. And they will take no intrusion upon it. They do not ask questions. They do not offer people the opportunity to leave. They simply remove the vermin from their sight. The Eldrin, thought to be these wise giant elves, is really what they look like. These almost glowing uh, over six foot elves. Because keep in mind, an elf is usually a small thing. Under human size, usually. <clears throat> but these Eldrin, they are evil. It has put shock amongst the people because uh, there was a war that was going on between the Nord and the uh, folk. They had been fighting over the lands because the Nord are a, a warrior people coming from the far norths and finding these islands. And the folk uh, are a peaceful people, a matriarchal people, in fact. And their war had ripped off because of their differences in their thinking and differences in their culture. But the, appro the approach and the arrival of the Eldrin has brought that war to an end. Fifteen years of peace have actually saw an amazing amount of integration between them. So much so that uh, previous Fafolk uh, lands are now uh, ruled by Nord and Nord lands ruled by Fafolk. It has been a great thing for the joining of the two human groups. But the elves find themselves conflicted. The Eldrin are the legend. They are the ancestor. They are the great thing to aspire to. But they're not what they expected. Lewer elves are starting to take sides. Some are joining the Eldrin as is their duty. Their ancestral duty. Others are forming rebellion which the Eldrin are dealing with swiftly. Or so they think. Our story is not set in Seraphal. Our story is set on the island of Moray. Moray is to the west, and uh, through many of the conflicts that have gone on over the years, uh, they tend to find themselves outside of it. Even during the war uh, between the Nord and the Fafolk, uh, they had very little fighting here. And now with the Eldrin returning, they see no need to get into it. I mean, why? But the problem is, uh, here on Moray, uh, several times throughout history, gods have walked here. Does this disturb you? Well, uh, it does not disturb the people of uh, Moray, for it is commonplace. But unfortunately, over the rising of the past 15 years of the return of the Eldrin and the end of the Spell Plague, the Isle of Moray has seen one god walk upon it, which uh, would probably be preferred not to be. Because the god of the wild, Malar, has been seen walking the plains. And the problem is, he has brought with him the curse that is, a, that is of his creation, that which we call lycanthropy. The werewolves have complete control of the western side of the island, and they are constantly hitting at the gates of Kaer Moray. And of course, this is protecting the city of Denegal and all of the east coast where the humans are living. But this is not where we are. We're not on the front lines of the battle between these black blood werewolves that have come in, uh, nor is it on the front line of what's going on with the Eldrin and uh, Sidrel. But no, we find ourselves in Cork, a small little fishing town, which actually has quite a bit of uh, uh, agriculture. 
they have friendly relations with the uh, city to the west of Horst. Now, Horst is an uh, interesting place within Faerun because it is a place where humans and orcs live peacefully together. You see, the orcs of the Orkskill Mountains, they are not your typical orcs. They're not these wild, primitive things who base themselves upon the battle of war, not unlike the, the, uh, the Nord that have come uh, many decades ago. But these are civilized orcs. They mine, and they farm, and they intermingle. Many of the population of Horst are actually half-orcs, and they get along well with Cork. Bray, to the north, however, is a little bit different. Uh, Bray is a bit of a holdout of the old Nord thinking. Uh, they don't get along well with anybody else, really. <clears throat> but unfortunately, <clears throat> their wares are necessary. They don't want to mix with the folk. They want no damn elves in there. Uh, they are uh, quite xenophobic, actually. Uh, but one thing they do is in that forest you see to the south here on this map, uh, there are giant spiders. Lots of them. And this might sound like a bad thing, but for Bray, it's a great thing. They harvest their silk, and they use it to make fine textiles. And those textiles sell very well in the city of Denegal. Now, Denegal is the major hub here in Moray, uh, and merchants from all over the Sword Coast come here to buy the unique and, uh, and interesting items that can be found and created by the people of Moray. This is where we find ourselves. In Cork, our small little town, we have a thriving uh, uh, fishing business and we have ag agriculture as well. But Cork isn't special. It isn't wealthy. It just is. And the people usually are happy. There have been some events of late, though, that are bringing some change to it. But nevertheless, their new leader, who's only been in charge for three years, Thane Jürgen, is happy. The people love him. His daughter, Lacey, is quite beautiful. And he's always worrying about all the suitors that are sure to come. But nevertheless, welcome to Cork. And our adventure begins. Now, uh, you guys, uh, I think I laid that out pretty well. Uh, so, uh, you guys are sitting outside the town. And... Um, uh, you're actually working as we we know that uh, I need to know what slick is going to do but the rest of these guys what's happening is this um, uh, all these guys are here uh, um, as we we went through it but I'll go through it again uh, uh, we have uh, bill uh, who is a, a half elf uh, monk and he works with the priest and the priests are here on a mission uh, they're in the city of cork uh, and they've been welcomed by th uh, by the train and uh, they're here to build a temple uh, to Coraline. Now, Coraline, of course, is the uh, is the head of the Elven uh, uh, pantheon. But uh, you know, the the people, the the Nord and the folk, they have no trouble with the Leor Elves. Uh, they're worried about this thing that's going on with the Eldrin, but uh, uh, they have no trouble with Elves at all, and uh, they're happy to have temples. There are several temples here, uh, but the, this team has come uh, to build a temple to you know the great Elven god. Uh, Bill is part of it. He's an apprentice stonemason. Uh, we also have, uh, 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 of course, his character's name is. Uh, 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 Felon, uh, which, that's a better Irish name actually, uh, and uh, uh, Adaril. Uh, they are here, both of them, working on the team. Now, uh, Adaril is a cleric himself, but uh, uh, he's part of this team of building the temple, and they are sitting outside the, uh, the town right now, outside the gates. Um, and uh, uh, we also have our uh, 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 Baron here, our local, he's from Cork, and they're sitting outside, and what they're doing is they're, uh, they're collecting stone uh, they're they're kind of in the resource collecting part, part of the build right now. And, uh, of course, uh, uh, Bur uh, Baran is part of the scouts and, uh, and uh, forester group of Cork. That's his job. That's what he does. And uh, he's out there helping collecting wood so they can move the rocks around and things like that. And everyone's nice and busy uh, doing their thing. And uh, it's, a, it's fairly early morning. It's after breakfast, but uh, uh, there's a lot left to the day. Uh, now, the only thing I really need to know is what is Jimmy doing? What is Slick Jimmy doing? Um, and you can call her Laz. And just uh, for short. Oh, oh Laz. Okay, good. Because yeah, I can't see the character. That's right. Yeah. Um, she's she's just traveling. She's a she has her own agenda, but she's up to find um, 
any information. So okay, okay. Can let let me the group, let okay. me let me get a better understanding of your character now, because the last time we left, you've changed it since the last time we talked, uh, and that's fine. Yeah, that's not a problem. Uh, but um, last time we talked, uh, she had uh, uh, she had a teleport spell either cast upon her, or she tried to cast a spell, and it became a teleport teleport spell, and she landed in the Murloc Val uh, Valley. And the Yellow Drain, of course, uh, captured you because it were this person just popping up and they were kind of checking you out. And they're like, ah, this person's cursed. Better just to kill her for safety, right? But these monks who were getting ready to leave to go to Moray to build a, uh, a temple, um, uh, they smuggled you out because they didn't want to see you die. So they tried to protect you and they brought you to uh, Cork with them. That's how we left it last time. Now, from what you're telling me now, it sounds like you're just here of your own accord looking for dragons. Essentially, she's traveling from place to place, but I mean, that's fine. She could have been teleported in. Well, no, no, no. I, I, want, to deal with that, that, I want that to situation. know what you want to do, right? I, I like that, actually. I mean, you know, if you're on a quest, sometimes st crazy stuff befalls you, and she has to deal with that in, in, you know, um, as it comes. So, I mean, she finds some people that seem to be um, amenable to her. However, she, you know, she's she keeps things pretty close to her vest. Okay, so they're they think they're helping you, which they are helping you. Uh, but you have yeah. your own agenda. Sounds good. Yes, yeah, she All has right. her own agenda, but no she's problem. she's not gonna she's not gonna hamstring them unless you know. Yeah, I get unless it. they do something to it. I get you know. it. Now, all these guys are sitting outside the city gates, or this guy, to call it a town, uh, the town gates, and they're they're just, uh, they're not far away, uh, but they're collecting stone, and uh, they're working, uh, building a temple. These guys are all involved in that temple construction. Um, and uh, are you helping them, or are you just in the town? I would probably be just in the town. I, I'm not very strong, so um, that would be... I probably more hindrance than help, and okay. since I, I usually have to wear a cloak, so people won't get freaked out about you know what I am. Sure, no problem. Uh, and do keep in mind that uh, tiefling are not that bizarre a thing. Um, you know, people would certainly maybe be suspicious, uh, but it's not like it's like oh my god, what is that? It's not like that. She probably can help them with things like um, bringing them refreshments and making sure that they, you know that sort of thing that's just perfect helping them pick up uh, pick up tools and make some clean clean you know anybody who's ever worked a construction site knows there's a lot to clean up so. well that's perfect uh, so let's see here uh they're working uh, uh outside uh they're across the river uh and they're uh if you look at the map i just uh, uh this map i just brought up uh let me make sure i did bring it up <laughs> Here we go. Uh, boom. There we go. Uh, if we look at this map I just brought up, uh, there, uh, of course, you have two bridges. You got one to the north and one to the uh, southeast. And the one to the north, they're working over there outside. And uh, let's say you're in this caravan area where they have all their tents and stuff set up right here in the front. And uh, you're preparing refreshments for lunchtime. You're helping the, uh, the other people who are doing that. Because uh, there's a whole uh, entourage of people who have come with the temple, of course. Uh, so that's what we have going on. Now, Excellent. So you're just inside that gate, uh, and uh, um, these guys are outside the gate. Uh, now, uh, as you guys are working, however, uh, and of course you inside the gate, uh, uh, Slick, you're going to be more aware of this than they are. But uh, things change because you start hearing noises. Hmm. I think I'm gonna go tell oh, that. about it. Alright, so we're we're out working and we actually hear these noises. Yes. Uh what you're hearing is uh uh strangely because you're sitting at the ca the main gate, right, is where you guys are. Uh but uh, uh from inside you start hearing bells ring. Uh and uh you actually see some smoke rising above the city down toward the port, actually. Uh and if I, I have that map up uh, so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Uh but uh the bells are ringing, and you're starting to hear screaming. There seems to be some major commotion. And how's my music? Is that better? <laughs> I like it. All right. I think I 
reset the mood. Let me bring it back down to half so it's in the background there. Uh, give me time, guys, so I can work out all the management of the sound. But I think it's going to be fun. Now that I know I can pipe that through like I had the way I set it up and it's working, <laughs> we're in trouble now. Uh, all right, so uh, you guys, uh, the, this town is not huge, right? I mean, if you look at our map of Cork, um, it, it does have a, a, a perimeter wall, uh, but do keep in mind that perimeter wall is made of uh, 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 charred wood, right? It's not a stone wall. It's a wooden palisade uh, that surrounds this. And as you see, there's, what, 100 buildings maybe? Probably less. 80 buildings inside this place. So it's not a village. It's, it's a town. Uh, but it's not big. Uh, so uh, the point being is uh, from one point, one point uh, where they're working to the other is only a few hundred yards, actually. Uh, so you guys hearing the bells ring, and of course the bells are, are, are telling uh, that there's uh, some manner of threat uh, and there's smoke coming out. Uh, you guys are outside the city and uh, Slick is inside the city. Uh, so what would you like to do? Um, I'm going to turn and look towards the smoke. Um... I'm assuming that if we're working, we're probably not wearing our full armor and everything, right? No, not you're not. You have no armor or on <laughs> whatsoever. Um, now, the monk is not a, really a problem. I'm assuming. Yeah. Uh, the cleric, uh, no, the the cleric would have some manner of raiment, uh, but he wouldn't have armor on. He's working, of course. Right. Uh, and um, who was the other one? The the scout is well. You're a scout, so I'm you're kidding. probably in most yeah. of your kit anyway. Yeah, I'm probably kidded out for yeah. to be a scout. <laughs> um, I'll look towards it. I'll, you know, kind of get a little bit of a huh look on my face, and then I'll, I'll tap Doyle and I say, um, "Let's check this out, brother." Yes, let's go. I'll, um, yeah. I mean, obviously, I'm not gonna have my armor, but um, I'm gonna, I'll just reach down, grab my mace on the way out. It looks like a fire. Let's see if we can help. <laughs> and I look, I look at them too, and I'm like, "What are you guys doing?" And then I look over and I see the smoke, and I'm like. Yeah, I'm going to go, too, because I want to see what's going on. Um, well, so, perhaps, us three, we're going. Uh, <laughs> perhaps your crabapple friends are back again. So, could be. Uh, those ready bastards. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see, then. Um, I'll put my mace on my shoulder, and we'll start uh, jogging over there, I, I guess. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, and of course, all the other workers are coming into everyone. It is, um, and uh, as you guys approach the gate, of course, they've closed. They've closed the main gate, but there's a smaller side gate that you guys run in through. There is no threat at this gate. Uh, there is a nice little castle gate that goes off to the side with a nice little, um, it's a nice little uh, um, uh, Mont and Bailey sitting up on the hill there. It's kind of nice. Uh, but uh, you guys start moving through the town. You see a lot of the men are running toward the problem, and the women are uh, uh, buckling down and stuff as they should. Uh, but uh, as you guys approach, now you get yourself here, and if you see my little cursor I have here, um, uh, we'll just follow the, the bouncing... Uh, uh, cursor. Uh, as you guys come down, you come down kind of this uh, main street that cuts through to go to the main plaza. And as you approach the plaza, uh, you start seeing uh, uh, seeing what the problem is. Uh, so let me come back over here and uh, switch my pictures over to this. All right there we go. Now, um, uh, this is kind of the area you're coming in. You see the mountain bay. This is this picture is not accurate for what we have. This is much cooler, uh, but I thought it was nice. Uh, but uh, you guys coming into the marketplace and um, uh, as you do, you see a bunch of armed men. Uh, uh, they look um, they look a bit disheveled. They're not. Uh, it's not like an organized army. You guys know what that looks like. Uh, but um, uh, they are uh, basically just attacking uh, uh, people randomly. Uh, but uh, the thing that comes off to you that's uh, that's shocking is that even though they're kind of slicing and, and dicing at the men. Uh, many of them are, are, are grabbing any woman they see, throwing them on their shoulder, and heading back toward the port. They seem to be, it seems quite evident, they're here to collect women. So. Oh, Vikings. <laughs> We've got the Viking tape on our hands. Um. Now, these are human, by the way. Uh, there's no elves here. You don't well. You, you don't know the extent of the situation. You see, there's like a, uh, maybe a dozen of them that are uh, uh, on the outskirts of this uh, this uh, central uh, uh, plaza here, um, uh, and uh, they're just grabbing women and fighting the men off uh, while they do so. What do you want to do? Well, I'm gonna dive in and rescue someone. Whoever's heaving a lass over his shoulder, I'm gonna go after him with my bow staff. Uh, I'm gonna start heading towards the port to see what where their ship is. 
Um, because if I can disable their ship or stop them from leaving, it, it'll stop, you know, okay. all of them. Now this is <laughs> now this is Zach I'm here and talking, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. You and Bob, I'm having trouble discerning. Um, uh, I'll, I'll okay. get it though. I'll get it. Don't you worry about it. Sorry. No. no. Um, I'm going to uh, I'm going to cast. This is Bob now, there. right? Yes, this is Bob. Yeah. Wow, you two sound so um, similar, I'm... dude. I'm going to cast um, bless. Uh -huh. uh, that's going to give everybody one d4 to uh, their attack and save throw. All right, good, good. Uh, so the group is hit by that. Whether you stay together or not, that's going to stay with you during this scene. That's a good thing about the fifth edition, uh, Slick. You're going to find out is, um, whereas we had basic durations and stuff like that from the the uh, the uh, D, &D used to play. Uh, these days, things last per scene, right? And we recover. Uh, uh, I'll get to that later, but uh, it's a lot handier, I think. I think it's more appropriate. Uh, anyway. Uh, so, um, liberate these women, Bullet says. Yes, I, we're going to. Now, uh, we have uh, <laughs> Zach, uh, who's a uh, uh, Baran, right? Uh, he's heading mm -hmm. down to the port to see what's going on, because obviously he's coming from there. Uh, we have the monk jumping jumping into combat, which uh, uh, Bob's character is not surprised by, because, you know, you guys, you've seen him grow up, I would assume, uh, being part of the same monastery, uh, same, same, you know, uh, mm -hmm. church, right? Uh, so, uh, and that only leaves me with Slick. Now, Slick, uh, you you saw uh, several of the people who you know, because you don't know many people here in Quirk, but uh, they're heading toward the threat. Uh, what is your character doing, Slick? Um, Laz has been following behind them, um, just right okay. at a distance. Um, she's, she's interested, curious to know what's going on, of course. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, I'm using a voice a little more feminine right now. That's fine. To uh, reflect Laz. And she will, uh, she'll, when she sees the woman being abducted, she's more than likely going to start casting darts. Okay, uh, so you're not using your spells, you're using an actual weapon. Mm -mm. Yeah, she's not okay. going to use that. She doesn't want to reveal her powers. Oh, that's fine, that's fine. Uh, all right, so you're entering the fray as well. Uh, so the cleric is popping off, bless, it's done. Uh, and uh, you guys go ahead. Now, um... Uh, I will go ahead and start at the top uh, with uh, Bill's character here. Which uh, which character's rename here? Fallon? Yes, Fallon. Fallon, Fallon much better Irish name. Um, and uh, uh, Fallon dives into the fray, uh, and uh, he's going after uh, one of these bandit marauder types uh, that has uh, a lady on his shoulder. And uh, uh, the, the problem is, uh, uh, Bill, they're working in pairs. So there is one that is defending his retreat. So you're going to have to deal with that one first. Now, uh, he is using a spear, uh, and he's uh, in some uh, pretty shabby-looking uh, scale mail. Uh, uh, but uh, but scale mail it is. So he is well-armored, uh, and he's well-weaponed. Uh, so uh, go ahead and uh, uh, everybody... I'm letting the cleric have his free action because of the size of this, uh, this plaza. Uh, but otherwise, I need to have initiatives, please. Okay. Yep. And that's a d20 plus my uh, anything? Wisdom? Um, well, uh, I don't usually do d20s. I usually do d6s. Oh, d6 is initiative? Okay. Yeah. I rolled a six. Okay. You got to add your dex bonus to that as well. Or your wisdom bonus, Ten. depending on what you, uh, you prefer. Ten, they're the same, so I have a plus four, so I rolled a All ten. Right. And uh, what about uh, what about you, uh, Bob? Uh, give me one second here. Where's my dice at? There it is. D six. Uh, I got an eight. Awesome. Slick. Nine. Okay, and uh, Baron. Zach? Uh, I got a six. I you got a six. six. All right. Well, let me do mine. I have my skull D6s here. My skull bone, uh, uh, knuckle bone D6s made from real knuckle bones, by the way. Oh, boy. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, okay. Uh, so uh, Zach and I are going at the same time. Everyone else is going first. So uh, <laughs> I believe the highest was Bill. So Bill, have at it. There's one guy that has a lady on his uh, back that he's smashing in the face, trying to get her to shut up. Uh, and the other one is defending his, his uh, retreat. Uh, so you're going to have to deal with, with the defender first. So go ahead. Okay. So And then the bless adds a 1d4 to my attack roll or to hit and damage. Is that right? Well, bless used to add simply plus one to your whatever. Yeah. Right. Now it gives you um it gives you plus four one it gives you um plus one D four plus one to any I mean I'm not sorry, that's the wrong one. It gives you one D four uh to uh any attack or save. Sweet. Any that's attack better. or save. There you go. Okay. Yeah. And uh do keep in mind, guys, that I am a uh, uh an old school D and Deer. Uh, uh, I have D, I have sec, I have the original in my head, second edition in my head, and third edition in my head. Uh, fifth edition is new. I have fourth edition, unfortunately. But we, we shouldn't all talk about that atrocity. Uh, but uh, fifth edition, I have said I have all the books. I've read through them, but uh, I might make mis- uh, fifth edition mistakes from here to there. Uh, but I got Bob, so we're good to go. So one to four it is. <laughs> okay, I'm glad I had that at least. I, I almost critted at the last second. It turned to a seven. So my total was nine with my deck so i hit i rolled for 13 to hit all right and that's with your uh one d uh, your d4 in the mix as well yeah oh, awesome yeah. all right uh and this is a scene this last is a scene i'm i'm sure uh bob uh yes yeah yeah I, I thought so um all right so uh you got a 13 and uh that's exactly what you needed so uh you come uh, lunging in with your now you're a, you're hitting who with the un- unarmed attack or are you using a uh, staff Oh, I'm using uh the my bow staff. So I was just doing yeah bow staff. With, okay. Yeah. All right. I'm so uh, hit him. you come in. So that... you, you, hold on a second. Now you come in and uh, he's uh, trying to parry with his spear and block you, but you slide down and you get a good strike on his for his left forearm. Uh, so uh, go ahead and give us some damage, uh, Bill. Okay. Where did that go? Where did it go? I don't know. There it is. Uh, it should should be in the middle uh, middle of your page. It's a D six uh, uh, plus your strength. Yeah. No, 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 no. Like I went to throw the dice, and now the screen is blank. That was weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's acting a little mm-hmm. weird today. Yeah. yeah. At See? least our stream you know is mean? going. Yeah. There's nothing there. Uh, reload the page. D eight. Throw. Oh, oh okay. D six. I think. D six. Well, no, you're a monk. Uh, you actually might get an up on that, huh? Well, no. It's a one D eight when I'm using. I was. With both I hands. I get you. Yeah. Swing yeah, around. Yeah, it's... No problem. So seven with a... And I have a plus four with my attack bonus. So awesome. I hit him for 11. Well, here is our combat dealer, which is good. We need one. So um, yeah. uh, uh, you lay out how much damage? 11. 11. All right. Uh, you, hit, you hit this guy and you hear his forearm break. As you, uh, you hit it. So you're, you you have a maybe a smile come across your face. Uh, and you notice uh, that this guy's, uh, as you do that, because you're right in his face, right? His eyes glow red. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. Uh, but uh, excellent. Uh, next down the row, I do believe, was uh, Slick Jimmy, right? Indeed. Um, my darts have a, a um, fast-acting sedative. So... Um... This isn't going to do massive damage, but it may knock them out. So. Sure. So do you want me to roll what, what dice? Well, would I, roll um, I would... Uh, uh, well, first of all, I need to know who you're attacking. Uh, now, you know these guys. You've you've met them. They helped you get out. Uh, you've met uh, Barone uh, uh, since you got here to Corka. He seems like a nice young man, though. Uh, mm-hmm. But um, uh, And he's madly in love. He's blinded by love, actually, uh, which you might find cute looks, or yeah. you might find tasty. Yeah, no, like I don't know. Uh, but uh, mm-hmm. you know these guys very well. So you got to follow the lead of the monk who you know is a skilled fighter, or do you want to take on another enemy? Um, whoever's closest to him. So he's. Oh, so you want to you want to back him up in that way? No problem. Yeah. Uh, there's another whoever's pair closest, closest to him. So I, if anybody is coming in from behind or from the flanks, 
no, uh, um, no one is. Uh, but to the side of him, uh, 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 there is another pair of these bandits uh, that has just scooped up a lady. They have not started moving yet, but there's uh, he's the, the guy is standing in front with a spear, uh, taking all comers uh, to defend the uh, capture of this woman. Uh, so that's, that's right next to it. So go right ahead. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to take your D20 and you're going to roll that and you're going to add your dexterity. Okay. Now, Bob, our, uh, so our darts is natural. still... Our darts are still a D four. Hold on a second. Uh, our bar, um, our darts are still a D four. I do believe so. Oh, yeah, I think they are. Let me double check. Yeah. So what was your uh, what was on your D twenty there? Uh, four. So and then and one sec. And it's the bless effect has effects also, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. My dexterity is sixteen plus one, so seventeen. Okay. Uh, so you got a four. You roll a four, and mm-hmm. then you add your dex, which is plus three. Uh, which will bring you up to a seven, uh, and then roll a d4 as well. All right, how do I get back to this? There we go. D4. Yeah, it is one d4. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, uh, they didn't change a lot. Actually, they kind of went back to second edition. I felt mm-hmm. when I was reading through so, all the rules. So did I? Did I hit? <laughs> uh, so I need to know what that four was, so I can add it to that one? seven. One. So eight. No, one. you missed. Uh, so you ah. throw darts. Now keep in mind your first level, so uh, you you don't have a super high skill yet, right? Uh, but uh, right. you do throw a dart, and it it, uh, it actually bounces off uh, his armor, is what it does. Uh, and then of course that brings us down to uh, our cleric, uh, which uh, what's your cleric's name again? Uh, my character's name is uh, Adderall. Okay. Adderall Ottoman. Um, awesome. He actually, he drops the mace that he was carrying. He starts swirling his hands around in kind of a circular motion, and he actually um, utters a prayer. He says, Sacred Father, infinite light of the world, hear your humble servant. Sustain me with your power, so I may go forth in your name. I request this of you completely at your mercy, almighty Corallon. Grace us with your hallowed might. And he casts sacred flame on the one that is running away so behind uh the the uh the combatant that uh, the monk's involved with yes okay no problem uh sacred flame go ahead and uh do your uh do your uh, attack and uh, uh it, it's automatic he has to make a dex saving throw okay and if he fails like he takes 1d8 damage i get you yeah uh, they've done that a lot with the magic they've changed that to uh instead mm-hmm. of attacks to saves eh, it's cool that's cool all right, and uh, he does the. He, uh, let's put it this way: he literally he literally moves perfectly in position for your sacred flame. It's as if he wanted to feel it. <laughs> okay. Uh, do you want to roll the damage, or should I do it? No, you please, by all means. Cool. Okay. Give me something good. Give me something good. Okay, that's that plus a d4. Whoops. Okay, he takes uh, six points of damage. All right. And and uh, I can't. I don't know if he's still on fire or not. Let me double check. Yeah. All right. So. Uh, oh he's no! Got... It's, it's just it's just ra- yeah it's just radiant damage. He doesn't he doesn't keep taking it. He just it's, he just uh, but it just is radiant. First round and then it's gone. Yeah. That's in, that's important to know. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, he uh, howls out in pain, literally. All right, uh, so that brings us down to uh, me and uh, and the uh, the folk hero, uh, our scout. Uh, so I'll let the scout go first, although this is happening simultaneously. You go ahead. What are you gonna do? Well, well, and do I get to the docks? What do I see? Like I get to the docks. I'm oh, that's wrong. Sorry, that's right. You were doing something different. Uh, now, yeah, I, uh, I, I ran away from the whole situation. So uh, <laughs> I will get to, I will get to you at the end then, because you spend your entire round running down there. Okay. Okay. Uh, and it's All not right. that far from where you guys are. I mean, you look at the map. I, I've been keeping the map up for the battle uh, here, and uh, for, depending on the battle, we'll, we'll, I'll have different images up. But uh, this is more of an auditory thing anyway. Uh, although we are trying to storybook it to a point, right? Uh, all right. Uh, so, uh, therefore, my attack. Uh, now, uh, this guy, who you definitely uh, know, you broke his arm. Um, uh, he uh, lunges at you with a spear, uh, and okay. 
and his eyes are glowing. He's very, very angry with you. He's really doesn't. He's not your friend. Understand that. And he growls at you, and uh, he oh. he throws an attack. Now uh, his attack is a sixteen. Uh, what is your armor class? Eighteen. Eighteen. Rock on. All right. Uh, so he you, now. What do you wear for armor? You're just an unarmored monk, I'm assuming, right? I'm I'm noodles. No, I don't. I just wear my my regular robes. My yeah, that's what uh, I my gear. All right. So basically, you parry yourself away from the spear. And uh, you can see the frustration in his uh, in his face. However, uh, you do notice another thing because you're in combat and you're a trained monk. Uh, now, now, one of the things that comes with being a trained fighter uh, is uh -huh. the fact that even first level, understand that a lot of people misunderstand first level. They think it's uh, this uh, newbie who doesn't even know how to pick up a thing. No, you're well trained. You are much more capable than the average population. So you have been well trained in combat and therefore you are calm and you're paying attention. That broken arm, which you, you, you could tell it was broke, not only because you heard it, heard it, but because of its misshapenness, it pops back in place all by itself. Ay, caramba. All right. <laughs> oh, man. All right, uh, moving uh, uh, on to, uh, let's see here. Uh, that, um, okay. Uh, the one it's standing next to uh, um, uh, the monk uh, who is defending another one getting away he is backing up with him uh, but you do see that um, uh, uh, the cleric recognizes this uh, and I'd say the tiefling does as well because you're both magical uh, he, he, you can't hear it but it see, you see his mouth moving and you see the, the slight transparent flash of a shield appear in front of him now, the other people wouldn't know this is an invisible thing, but being magical people, you recognize that he just cast a spell and he put up a sh some manner of shield. Uh, matter of fact, the sorceress, uh, who is uh, the tiefling here, uh, our Laz, uh, recognize it as the spell shield, where the, uh, the cleric maybe doesn't know the, the name of it. Um, uh, but nevertheless, that's what he does. Um... Everybody else is doing their thing. Uh, you see the guy who get hit by the fire. Uh, he's not happy about it, but uh, he's continuing on because they are they're on a mission. So he just takes his turn running, and he disappears down an alley. Uh, the guy who is uh, defending him is engaged, so he can't do that. Uh, and uh, the other guys start running as well. Uh, so uh, there's no real combatants that are left in the plaza right now. They're heading down these alleyways toward the port. Okay, Probably which running brings with us. The women? Oh yes, they are definitely running with the women. So, so they're burdened. They, uh, well, the ones who are running with the women are, and they're be, they're being defended for sure. All right. Mm. Uh, so let me see here. Let me pause this music just for a second, or should I? I don't know. You guys tell me in the chat. Is it uh, is the music overbearing, or is it okay? You got to kind of help me out with this because this is a new thing for me here, trying to add this. Uh, I feel like the music is fine, but if it's too much, you let me know, and I'll, I'll I just I moved it down a little bit, so you tell me how we're going with that. Uh, but nevertheless, um, uh, now getting over to uh, uh, Baron. Uh, now Baron, uh, you are heading down, and as you're running down, you're looking in the kind of the side street. You do pass two side streets, and uh, you see that uh, some of these bandits are carrying women. Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, as you get down to the port, you see that uh, the town guard, which there aren't many, uh, but uh, you do have guards, of course. Uh, they help uh, with all manner of things. Uh, that they are uh, sitting at this gate. The gate's on fire, by the way. Now this is a, this is a a uh, I know it, it's a stone uh, 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 palisade here. That's a, a stone wall that's showing in the map, but it's not. It's a wooden palisade. Uh, the wooden palisade gate uh, that goes to the port is on fire. Uh, the gate has been splintered open. Uh, you see several guards on the ground, uh, uh, either dead or bleeding out. Uh, and there's a whole bunch of um, of these bandits that are dealing with these guards. And uh, one of them catches your attention for obvious reasons. Uh, because it's basically oh, no. a seven-foot-tall no. wolf. Oh, <laughs> when I heard the red eyes and all the growling and stuff, I was like, werewolves. <laughs> no. <laughs> So I knew it. Great. <laughs> so basically, right. you guys have had your first run in with the Black Bloods, and they came by boat. I'd, I'd rather see some crab apple. 
You'd rather oh, see some okay. crab apple. Well, I'll give it time. Uh, but uh, anyway, you see this guy. Of course, this art isn't perfect. I just thought it was kind of fun. Uh, this guy is standing at the uh, port. Now, an interesting thing you notice is uh, that oh, uh, uh, these uh, uh, there's only one that is in werewolf form. Uh, the rest of them are in their human form. And uh, this guy, even though uh, he does have some damage on him and stuff, he's actually carrying a battle axe. He's not attacking with a uh, claw or, or tooth. And actually, he's more of a commander anyway. He's not he's not in the fray, uh, per se. Uh, but uh, that's what you see. Uh, so, mm, what would you like to do? It's a new round, uh, by the way, guys. But I'm just going to take, uh, can, I'm going can to it, take the can initiative. Can I roll for like, a perception to see if any of the women are lazy? Uh, you you're sure you can, yeah. All right. I forgot what this is. I forgot which one's perception. Uh, just a d20. Everything's pretty much d20 oh, okay. for uh, oh, okay. uh, rolling skills, and then your perception is uh, simply adding your uh, wisdom to it. Boom. Yep. All right. Cool. Uh, plus two. So twenty-one. You get plus two because I know as a scout you have perception, so it's whatever oh, okay. your wisdom plus two. Okay, so twenty-two. I have twenty-two. Okay. Uh, well, uh, uh, of course we can't possibly have a raid on Cork and not have Lacey involved. I mean, come on. Obviously. <laughs> uh, so uh, you do see Lacey, and she's being uh, uh, with several other women being uh, taken. Uh, on to the boat and it's seemingly they know who she is because uh, there's a much bigger entourage around her capture than the other women there's basically they're all in pairs but there's actually six of them around her so they obviously know who she is of course she is the daughter of the thane now we understand the thane is not necessarily a jarl or a mayor or anything like that but still he's the boss uh and they have the daughter of course uh now that's uh, quite a bit of distance from you uh even if you could run it would take you a whole round to do so but there are many werewolves in, uh, in between you and there so what do you want to do mm -hmm. um uh, what is the ship made of like what is it what kind of ship is it it's a standard wooden sailing uh, craft. I'd say it's probably a... Uh, oh, it's some manner of sloop, but it's on the large okay. slide of... Uh, maybe we'll call it a schooner. Okay. Um, now, uh, I understand. Can I, do a, can I do a sneak to try and get on board? Um, well, you'd have to get in the water to do that. Okay. <laughs> I would, I, I'm, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to go and see if I can disable the rudder or something to make it so they can't leave right away to sure. delay them. Um, so yeah, let's do that. All um, right. I go I sneak in the water. <laughs> okay. So you get yourself in the water. Uh, now um, uh, that's going to be this new round. And uh, you're, so you got that going on. Uh, let me bring okay. up, uh, back up the map. I mean, it's cool looking at the werewolf picture, but uh, I think the map is better for what we're doing until I get some of the art from all these guys. So I can start displaying their characters as they do stuff, but uh, we'll, we'll stick with what we got right now. And, and do keep in mind the good thing about this format, this story, the storyboarding or storybooking uh, uh, style of doing a D and D instead of doing something on like a foregrounds or something as we go along, our uh, catalog, our gallery of images is going to grow and grow and grow. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I've done this. Uh, this is the third time we've done it here on Fanspeak. And uh, it's really cool how it develops, actually. Uh, and this one's going to be fun, too, because uh, I'm reacting to their choices. And I'm going to continue doing so. Uh, so this is not a linear story at all. This is their story. So it's going to be fun. Uh, but uh, anyway, guys, uh, uh, you up in the plaza, uh, I'm just going to keep the initiative as it is. No need for it not to be. This is not. Um, this is not that kind of fight. So, uh, you guys go ahead. Uh, I'm assuming you're following the uh, uh, the bandits, uh, but you tell me what you're doing. How far are we from the palisade? Uh, uh, you guys are probably about. Who I don't know what is that. Uh, less than a hundred yards. I would say it's probably eighty yards, sixty yards, maybe. Not that far. And from the palisade, can I see their boat? Gotta say that again, a little louder. And from the palisade, can I see their boat? Um, well, if you get yourself on that uh, that main uh, road going down, you probably can see their boat, but you can see the port. Uh, and over the top of the houses, you can see, you certainly see the masts, for sure. Uh, but no, you can't see any particular boat. Uh, you know, you see smoke. You don't know what's going on at the at the port quite yet. Okay. All right. Well, just I, I, I will follow along uh, in the in the in the rear. Okay. See what I can do to help to assist. 
um, until such time as I can find the palisade and uh, view the uh, the ship. Okay. Now, uh, you, uh, as you are running, um, uh, you have a choice. Uh, if you take your full round of movement, you'll be able to get down to the port. If you take half your movement, you can continue moving, but you're just moving a little slower. And you can throw another dart at that uh, re that retreating uh, that retreating pair, uh, but you won't make it to the port this round. It's up to you. Uh, but Bob, what are you doing? Okay. As soon as I see that werewolf, I what start werewolf? casting. I mean, well, the the big. Uh, you don't see the him. big. Uh, you're not at the port. Oh, we don't see him. Oh, yeah. we're not there yet. Okay, so we're we're no. chasing after these guys, right? Uh, you know, I'm I'm asking if you're going to do that. Uh, you have your monk engaged. You know he can't break off engagement. He's he has to deal with the enemy in front of him. Uh, you're you're mm -hmm. com you're a cleric. You're combat trained, right? Right. Uh, so you can either sit and back up the monk, uh, or you can uh, um, uh, leave him to his skill and uh, and uh, follow the uh, the bandits that are running down the streets. Okay, the guy he hit, uh, he he does he still look like he's injured severely or? Um, you can't tell from where you okay. are. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm going to run past him, and as I do, I reach out, I put my hand on his shoulder, and I cast uh, guidance. Okay, uh, no problem. Uh, just keep in mind that you will not be able to make it to the port this round if you do that. Okay, I understand. Yeah. Okay. No problem. Uh, so uh, it's a uh, he. It's not. It's non. Um, uh, it's a non uh, uh, conflicted uh, thing. So just go ahead and tell him what he gets. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. It's not the not guidance. It's resistance. Oh, I see. Um, okay, okay. Okay. It's uh, for up for uh for the pretty much the duration of the scene. Um, he gets a a D4 and add that to any saving throw he has to make. Yeah. Okay. No problem. Uh, all right, excellent. So uh, you do that. You dodge around. You get about halfway down the uh, road heading toward the port. Uh, now, uh, uh, Thelon, you are in a very different situation. You are engaged, engaged in combat. Now, you get to go first, so go ahead. Now, you know you're dealing with something, and you know the trouble that's going on. You're not ignorant of the fact that over here on Moray, because you've been hearing the stories constantly since you got here, werewolves are a problem, but they're far away. They're not here. But yet they, but yet it's obviously coming to your mind. You're dealing with some kind of supernatural thing because you, you know, you saw what happened. Uh, so uh, what do you want to do, sir? Well, see, and that's a good thing because I, since I am aware of that, I definitely, you know, encased one end of my bow staff with the silver uh, tip. And that's right? not something so... you can just automatically do. You can't do that. I know, I know, I know, I know. I was just kidding. So I'm gonna go. Um... I'm going to attack this guy. I'm going to use my bonus attack as a monk also. So I'll have two rolls. Mm -hmm. See if I can go for that. So I'll continue on uh, with, I think I still have the bless through the whole scene, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So rolling to hit the guy. Oh my gosh. I can't roll to save my life. I rolled a four on my attack with the, with the bow staff. So that's with my dex. That's eight. And I think you said 13 was the magic yep, number there. Is, um, uh, don't, his don't, don't, yeah, don't forget to add that D4. It okay, I did. Okay. I yeah, rolled yeah. a four. Um, I rolled, yeah, I rolled yeah. a three and a one. So That's okay. <laughs> so um, then I'll go with... Well, this guy is pissed. So uh, he's his his uh, guile is up and he, yeah. he's, he's blocked your uh, blow. Uh, and he comes in at you and uh, he gets an 18 this time. Oh, he hit me. Okay, uh, now he hit you with a spear, and uh, let me go ahead and uh, do that damage. Uh, you take uh, seven points of damage. Oh, dang. He hits you pretty Ouch. hard. Okay, do you do anything when he hits you, man? Um, well, I don't know. I was wondering, now, with the, the unarmed second attack, does that come after your attack, or is it like a quick one-two? Well, um, now, at your with your character, do you have a second attack? Yeah, it's a monk trait. Okay, well, you should have uh, been doing that at the same time. No problem. Go ahead and take your okay. second attack. You should you should have done them together. Uh, but it, it, I think you probably understood by now it doesn't matter. Right. But go ahead. Yeah, I rolled a... This would have been... This would hit uh -huh. um, with 16. Okay, and do your damage. Right. And damage... This is just a d4 for the second because it's just a 
So you're like kicking like him the... is what you're doing, something like that. Yeah, or an elbow. And yeah, I did, yeah, yeah. I did an eight. Okay. Do you add? He adds his. Uh, he adds his strength bonus into that, right? Well, my dex. Yeah. So eight. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I got. I maxed out. With that. Oh, awesome. Uh, so uh, you hit him. You crack him across his uh, uh, his uh, face, uh, left side of his yeah. face. You actually see his uh, cheekbone crack. Uh, you see blood beginning to trickle. He's not happy with you. Uh, and uh, but of course you're you're in serious pain. You just got hit pretty hard. I mean, it, it probably took you in half, right? Yeah, I'm. Yeah. I, I went from down to five hit points. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, this is a, a you're in a serious situation. Uh, but did, uh, uh, real uh, quick, do you yell out or anything? Uh, yeah, I mean, I okay. say, ah! so I take a spear in the belly. <laughs> he does, yeah, or, or okay. on a rib, yeah. Uh, now, um, uh, the guy who he's protecting is well off down uh, uh, the way. Matter of fact, he's just in front of the cleric. The cleric is um, uh, just behind the guy who's carrying uh, the lady that, of the pair that you were uh they are attacking here bill uh now uh, uh we and we see our tiefling uh gets down to the port this round and uh you see what i described to uh, uh boren uh zach's character uh there are uh just all of these bandits uh getting on to the boat uh they're uh they're already getting off of uh the mooring uh they and they was like a quick uh, attack mooring anyway uh, and uh, standing there, uh, uh, orchestrating all of this, you see this uh, very large werewolf. Hmm. Big old seven-footer uh, standing there. Uh, so, boom, we're coming to a new round. I need to know what everyone's doing. Now, uh, that round, uh, uh, Boran uh, spent getting in the water and moving over. And uh, this round, he's going to be able to get an action uh, toward the back of that. So, uh, uh, let me deal with him first, if you don't mind. Uh, so, uh, Boran, uh, go ahead and uh, uh, give me a sneak. And now you're in the water, so there's certainly not an advantage for you, but that's okay. Uh, give me a sneak. All right. Let's see, D20 plus. What is it? Stealth, dexterity. That's right. Oh, it's B plus five. Cool. Uh... Oh, no. 13. <laughs> okay. Okay, uh, one of the uh, the bandits on the uh, that's uh, sitting there and uh, coiling up rope quickly, uh, he sees you and he screams out, uh, he screams out uh, uh, to starboard, to starboard. Oh boy! Ruh -ruh. Well, <laughs> oh boy! Um, nevertheless, you do dive, get dive, dive, dive. Well, uh, now that, that's why I'm asking you. Uh, you are in position. You're toward. You're at the rudder area at the back of the ship. You've come in. Mm -hmm. Now you have an action. Now uh, you can either retreat or you can uh, take an attack, or, or you could try to do something to this. Now you do have traps and all those kind of other things, so you could dismantle this in a round if you get the roll. You do have those skills. Yeah, uh, let's do that. Okay. Um, what would I roll for my toolkit thing? Uh, well, uh, the toolkit's going to give you plus two, uh, and you okay. do have a scout's uh, toolkit, and it's uh, for th in this particular case, uh, it's just fine. Now, uh, that toolkit is, uh, it'll depend on the situation how useful it is, but in this case, it is. Uh, so, uh, that's got to add plus two. I'm sure you have uh, 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 some kind of trap or something skill uh, that can apply as well. Um, and then, uh, also, you've got to roll your uh, d20 and add your dex, right? Or in this mm -hmm. case, it would probably be All intelligence, right. wouldn't it? Yeah, it's to intelligence. Oof. That's a lot of pluses, dude. Go ahead and make your roll. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. And... Yeah. You're a, you're a thief, right? Okay. Yeah, just mm -hmm. roll a d20, yeah. dude. Just roll a d20. Yeah, I did. And I add... Did, and, and, and a two, and then another two for my that's right intelligence okay and i don't i don't have a, actually a, another multiplier for uh well, that's fine teams. that's fine uh so i'm at i'm at 12 <laughs> okay uh that's not enough <laughs> to get what you want done 
Uh, but uh, you, uh, well, let's say you have a partial success and you are able to uh, kind of lock it. It's not a, it, 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 with a strong arm up on the rudder to probably break what you got going on. But uh, you can continue the action uh, into next round. Uh, but that's what you're doing, uh, and uh, I will get to my action momentarily. Uh, let me come back up to. Uh, let me see what the cleric is doing. What are you doing, cleric? Um, when I hear him scream out like that, I immediately stop and go right back the other direction. Okay. So your movement to get there and then action. What do you want to do? Okay. I see him uh, take the spear to stomach. Well, you see that he has taken one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm going to swap out my... Um, actually, I, 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 I... It's I, a free I, action. I start, yeah. I start to think uh, uh, to cast um, um, heal on him heal wound but i stop and i swap it out and i cast guiding bolt okay uh now guiding bolt is this a, a roll attack or a save attack it's it's a roll okay go ahead okay let me go ahead and get my dice up here oh if i could get my there we go Cross through my fingers yeah you better <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Well, if, if teal dice would come up here, I'm gonna I'm gonna go grab my own dice if this stops doesn't stop. I'm using my right, own dice. Go. I got nice, pretty, yeah. pretty dice too. Okay. Um. Damn it. Oh, by the way, just I'm so you guys up. know, I am one of those DMs that I have this little plastic container sitting next to me it's a it's a di one of those dice holders you uh, that you when you buy dice right and inside there i got a normal size d oh, d20 yeah. normally i use this be these big d20s which i love but then there's a normal size d20 and when something happens uh that uh I, as a dm of course i can mitigate things right i can say oh, it hit or it didn't it's my choice uh but that little thing right there when it's a situation where fate is in charge i'll tell you guys and i'll roll that uh, and if it comes up, whatever comes up, it comes up. Understand that. I do that. So okay. um, um, yeah, there are moments where uh, fate is truly taking place. Uh, 22. No problem. You you hit uh, very clearly. Go ahead and do your damage. Okay. We'll come out here. Is this radiance damage? Um. Uh, this is, is. Oh, if my here we go. Yes, it is radiant damage. All right, cool. Okay, let me get this up here. Boom. Okay. Um, 22. 22 damage? Yeah, that's 46. Holy crap. <laughs> All right. Well, um, now this rating damage. That, that's so this... why I stopped. Yeah, yeah, that's why I stopped and thought about it for a second. I was like, nope, I'm taking this guy out. Okay. Now this is rating <laughs> damage. Now in D and D, uh, for silver uh, uh, affects werewolves, obviously, but magical damage of certain types does as well. Uh, magic weapons certainly will work as a silver weapon, uh, but radiance damage will most certainly uh, injure a werewolf. Uh, so you blast him, and it's not enough to take him out, but damn, you hurt him. Uh, let me give him a con roll. Okay, which he, he doesn't have. Uh, all right, so um, let me get Bill's act uh, action in here first, and then I'll, I'll tell you what happened. But uh, okay. you explode um, this bolt in his back. Blood, bone chips come off. He howls out in pain. Bill, go. Okay, uh, real quick, though. Um, in, the, in addition to that, the next attack ha is made with advantage. Okay. So you got advantage, no, I, Bill. That, yeah. yeah, so you, now, you basically wrote two D20s yeah. instead of one. And take the higher I thought one. I already... Did I not already go this round? No, you haven't. This is a new round. I just was seeing oh, what cool. other people were doing before I came to you. I know you're the first actor, but you know, uh, you I what happen. you do happens before that happens. But I, you can't hurt the thing. Is the is the reason why I went to Bob first because I know he can. Uh, so uh, go ahead, Bill. What are you doing? So I mean, I can't hurt the thing. No. You can hurt <laughs> it. It's just not going to stay hurt unless yeah. you get its head cut off. It's hard to do with a bow staff. Pretty much, yeah. But I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> never now remember, you never remember your your first attack. You're going to have advantage, so you roll two d20s instead of one. That's right. And take the highest. 
I like that new system, okay. by the way. I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, I do too. So what are you doing, Bill? Tell 20. me. Bro and the dice, man. I rolled an 18. So you're attacking. To hit. Okay. Yeah, I'm attacking. I rolled an 18 with a 1, so I rolled a 19, 23. No problem. You hit him quite solidly as he gets blasted oh, in the back uh, almost simultaneously. Uh, so go ahead and do your yeah. damage. Okay. And this is a D8 and a plus 4. Okay. No, the plus four. Um, where's that here? It's okay. Don't worry about that. Plus Just give me the yeah. damage. It's okay. Yeah. Just uh, right. roll okay. your D8 and add your okay. strength, please. Or dexterity. All right. I, yeah, I need a whole five points of damage. Okay. Uh, now, uh, uh, however, uh, that coupled with what it had done does, n does uh, knock him down. Uh, he drops to a knee. Uh, he uh, puts out an uh, audible... Uh, uh, sound of pain and exhaustion uh, he is on his knee uh, so uh, his action is to uh, to flee uh, now he heads off to the west instead of to the south where the cleric is coming uh, but as he's running away Bill uh, you do you know now the cleric doesn't get this because he's he attacked at distance but he's in, engaged in combat with you Bill so what you get is an attack of opportunity because he's disengaging so go ahead and take an okay. attack no, am I still doing that bonus? No, that, no, that's just for the first attack after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just okay. uh, roll normal. Okay. Okay. And you keep oh. forgetting your second unarmed attack, dude. You remember that? Yeah. Okay. So the first attack was a fourteen mm -hmm. to hit, and then the second attack was a ooh natural twenty, so twenty-two to hit. All right, no problem. Uh, so uh, um, uh, you hit him twice, and go ahead and give me your damage on both of those. Now, uh, this is, uh, I'm not sure exactly what 5th edition is doing with crits. Uh, with me, uh, uh, the crit damage is doubled. Okay? Now, what that means is uh, that unarmed attack, which is, I believe, a D4 for you at this level. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what you're yeah. going to do is roll 2D4. It's that okay. simple. Right? Okay. And also, uh, because you rolled a, tw a natural 20, uh, please take a fate point. Now, uh, this is something that I do believe is optional in 5th edition, but I always use them. Now, a fate point uh, can be used at any time to make a reroll uh, on, on anything you want. Uh, it, can, uh, it, it can be used also to give yourself advantage on a roll if you'd like, uh, and it also can give you the opportunity to cause a reroll. That's what fate points do. All right. So anytime you want, as you gather these fate points and you get them for rolling natural 20s and uh, you give, get them for good role playing uh, uh, moments and things like that. Uh, but uh, just keep in mind, you can re-roll a roll, you can cause a re-roll, or you can gain advantage. That's what uh, a fate, spending a fate point does for you. So you did gain one of those, Bill. Cool. All right. First attack, the damage was 14 points. Yeah. And then the second attack... Um, was the 2d4 yep so eight with a so i rolled a four plus my dexterity um i guess actually it was be 3d4 right because i'm doing the bless no so, bless doesn't add damage it just uh, adds to attack yeah oh it's just attack. there's, okay. a, there's so another 2D4. higher level spell that does that yeah yeah gotcha okay then i did six ten points on so the crit. all together 24 okay uh, yeah. So you uh, you thrunk this guy in the back of the head and you you windmill kick him uh, to the side of his temple and he drops like a cord of wood on the ground. Okay, now uh, you know uh, that uh, that damage that the cleric did seemed to hurt him seriously hurt him, but you know right well that's probably not going to keep him down though. So uh, we'll get back to that and see what you guys do with that. Uh, let's go back to the port. Uh, we have the action has been done from uh, uh, Baron already. Uh, so it brings us to uh, Slick Jimmy's uh, La Laz. What is Laz going to do? You see the situation, so what's your action? What's my range to the boat? Uh, your range to the boat um, is probably a, about, ooh, let me see here. You're, sitting, you're standing at the uh, just inside the burning gate. Uh, I would say it's about... 30 yards. 30 yards. 40, Can maybe. Can I see Lacey? Can I see Lacey? Uh, not offhand. Uh, you see that there's okay. a lot of commotion going on in the boat. You can tell where they are because they're all 
and they're carrying women and you don't see her particularly uh okay. you don't see any of your buddies here uh that or at least the people you know here uh you see the guard is having a a, a fair difficult trouble uh but you were able to move around that and come through the gate quite easily because they're kind of in front of the gate and uh, now you could engage uh the fight that's going on but it's kind of it's kind of ending because uh, all of these bandits and now you see probably werewolves uh they're all retreating to the boat and the big guy is starting to move as well uh the one who's is actually the boat, is the boat um got rowboats or does it go sails uh it's a schooner uh uh it's a it's a two master i'm gonna fireball their sails you don't have fireball i, I thought i had fireball you oh fire bolt oh okay i'm sorry i'm sorry i, I thought i heard fireball it's like oh my god uh, but uh, yeah no go right ahead now, uh, in 5th uh, edition, uh, is Firebolt a, uh, a, a rolled attack, or is it a saved attack, uh, Bob? I believe it's rolled. Well, I'm sorry, you broke up You broke up there. Firebolt. Is that a rolled attack, or is that a saved attack? Um, are, you, are, are you talking about the uh, the Tiefling um, innate ability? I, yeah, yeah, the I, I, think, I think he is, yeah. No, he's talking about the cantrip. Yeah, I'm pretty sure okay. it's a rolled, a rolled attack, yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. So go ahead and uh, roll a d20 for me, Slick. Okay. 20 natural. Oh, okay. Dang. Well, first, first of all, write down a, uh, uh, give yourself a fate point, which I just explained what they do. Uh, and uh, you hit the sail and uh, uh, no problem. And one of the sails is on fire. Okay. Okay. Excellent. But make sure you write down that fate point, though, and uh, and you know use them, guys. Uh, there's no need to hoard them. You should use them uh, because you'll you'll get them continuously. Um, and it's just a little thing to mitigate uh, the luck of the dice. Is really what it is. Uh, but anyway, uh, so. Yes, the cleric is bringing the pain. He is. Uh, so it brings <laughs> us back to a new round. Now, um, uh, now let's start over here in the water with uh, Baran. <laughs> now, Baran, what are you going to do? Uh, you, they are well aware right, of sorry, you. Oh, oh, no. Sorry, I do apologize. I forget. Yeah, I, was uh, say, I do have an yeah. attack. Um, uh, yeah. I forgot about my round. Um, now, that guy's out. Um, let me see if the big guy notices this tiefling uh, causing trouble. Uh, he doesn't even know you exist. You're right next to him, and he he, he rolled a one, so he's completely clueless. Good for you, <laughs> Slick. Um, <laughs> uh, but he does move past you, uh, not necessarily in striking range, but he moves he moves past you, and he's heading toward the boat. He's the last one to get on, and his whole round is spent uh, getting on board the boat. Now, toward the back of the boat, uh, we have several of them. Uh, we'll say three. Uh, are launching crossbow bolts at a object oh, in the water. <laughs> can we hear it? Can we, can we hear it? We guys. Oh my God, that's many dice. Oh God, <laughs> dude. <laughs> All right. Well, interesting things. We got a one from one of the guys, so he shoots himself in the foot. Awesome. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, the other guy just misses, but uh, what, but the the third guy rolled a natural twenty. Damn. Oh, yeah, that's not good. That is not great. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, this could be yeah. really bad. I actually might one shot yeah. you. Hold on a second. So 20, 20 <laughs> sus. Yeah, well luckily it's crossbow bolt, so there's no strength or anything being being added. It's just the bolt itself. Just well, we got a we can take you to res you just need to like, you know, hawk everything you own. Right, right. <laughs> Uh, goodness gracious! Well, I cannot believe I don't have one of those dice in here. I'll have to, I'll have to uh, adjust. No problem. All right, you. Uh, uh, I say you get pretty lucky. Uh, you take yourself uh, a total of twelve damage. <laughs> oh, ow! I'm hurting. <laughs> I bet you are. Yeah, I don't I actually don't have a D8 in my pile. I'm gonna have to uh, fix that. Uh, but that's all right. I, I just. Uh, Anyway, I fixed it. Uh, so, uh, yeah, you took 12 points of damage. Uh, I'm sure you're pretty low, close to zero right now. How many health points do you have? Uh, with the thing, I thought I had 12, so I think I'm dead. 
No, you're not dead. No, you're, no, you're, <laughs> I mean, you're, like, I, I need saves. Yeah, but I mean, like, I'm really like I'm floating in the water, going blow. <laughs> yeah, you are floating. Now you're at you're at exactly zero. You're not unconscious. Uh, you're uh, mm-hmm. in a, uh, but you are in a situation where we're going to have to. If you take another point of damage, you're going to have to start doing con rolls. Uh, but uh, mm-hmm. you're not right now. You're at zero, which means you're you can't do anything other than just kind of half move yourself Float. somewhere. Okay, yep. uh, but you're not unconscious, uh, and that's the way that works. If he is a negative one, well, he's probably going to drown because there's no one here to help him really, uh, mm-hmm. unless uh, the unless the tiefling got a good perception roll. But uh, luckily, you're at zero. Okay, and uh, I'm right. assuming you are kind of moving yourself away uh, uh, from the attack. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, uh, you do that uh, over uh, the tiefling is unobserved. So nothing happens with that. Bob is over there with an unconscious werewolf, uh, and uh, for now. And uh, basically, what they do is they're they they're, they're moving the boat out, and the boat is moved away from the uh, pier. Actually, uh, new round now. Uh, uh, Born uh, uh, Baron, you're getting yourself to safety, right? Yeah. At that point, I'm just trying to survive. Yeah, you're just trying to get on the so... beach. Uh, now, uh, Bob and uh, uh, Bill, uh, I'll come to you guys in a minute. Uh, the only person who's really in any position to try anything uh, is the tiefling. Uh, now, this boat has moved away from the pier. Uh, they're starting to uh, get themselves... Uh, uh, they're, they're basically oaring out. Uh, so there's a bunch of oars in the water and they're pulling out. Uh, you see a couple of the werewolves, uh, or a couple of these bandits, sorry, uh, that are dealing with the fire you caused. Uh, what do you want to do? Do I see um, what's the fellow in the water? Uh, give me a perception roll. Just roll a d20. Uh, one moment. Would that be a oh, ten? Oh. Okay. Yeah. Um. Uh. Now, what is your wisdom? Um, twelve plus one. Okay, so that's an eleven. And uh, do you have any uh, skills like? Uh, uh, what are your skills? Tell me what your skills are offhand. Uh, I got Wild Magic Surge, mm-hmm. um, Tide to Cast, Dark Vision, Hellish That's Resistance. That's not skills. I, I want your oh, skills. Oh, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong yeah. thing. Yeah. Where are they at? Yeah, next okay, to your, okay. next to your, next to your stats, um, there should be a list of skills there. Which ones do you have dots in? Uh, plus two Arcana, plus two Athletics, plus five Intimidation, plus three Survival. Hmm. Okay. Is, um, there any, is there anything under perception at all? Plus one. Okay, so that's a twelve. Yeah. Um, hmm. Yes. You see him flailing around, and the folk here is screaming, "Save my ass!" <laughs> I will. I will attempt to get him out of the water. Do you want me to jump? I guess no, it's a, a, you, that you spend your round helping him. He's trying to get to shore himself. You spend your round getting him to shore. No problem. Right. Uh, so, by the uh, way, where did I get shot? Where did I get uh, shot? You you got shot. <laughs> and let's let, let's see. Uh, I rolled a twenty. Uh, so mm-hmm. uh, that's a good question. You shouldn't. You should, uh, let me just teach you something a little bit about DM Zach. Never give them opportunity. Uh, so uh, uh, go ahead and roll a d twenty for me. <laughs> oh, oh God. <laughs> you might have just lost an eye. Yep. Seven. A seven. Okay. Uh, you got hit in the uh, left upper arm. Oh, that's not bad. That's not bad. If you'd rolled up uh, 18, 19, or 20, I would have been a headshot, and I would have certainly took an eye. Yeah, that would have been fun. Uh, but uh, no, he just took it in his shoulder. But uh, it was it, deep. It actually has pinned your left arm to your body. Uh, so it's actually that arrow is probably near your heart, actually. Oh. Um, so uh, you're oh, not in good shape. Up. Yeah. You're bleeding in the water. Yeah. And the shark, yep. Sharks yep. are coming. Well, we're a bit shallow for sharks, but uh, that's okay. Uh, he's on shore now. As you guys see with this okay. town of Cork here, uh, this is uh, more of a beach. Uh, type of situation. Uh, so uh, let me come over to uh, the two guys in the plaza. Uh, now you have an unconscious werewolf on the ground. Well, he's a, in human form, but you know he's a werewolf. Uh, so what do you guys want to do? I'm going to bind him up. Um, okay. Cleric? Hands um, and feet. Like a pig. I look down and I, I look down and it's this damn mongrel. And I pull out a, uh, a roll of bandage. And I start to bandage um, 
I start to bandage Dial. The the monk. I start bandaging him. Okay. Um, so you're doing a and, healing uh, uh, roll. Now, are you going to do a yeah. first aid, or are you going to actually cast a spell? Uh, it's a first aid. Okay. Okay. Uh, so uh, uh, first aid is like D four or something like that. It well, a full roll of bandages is two D four. The two D four. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll yeah. that as you're. Uh, he's binding him up, and you're trying. Well, you got in between the two. You're able to get that done. Uh, so go ahead and make that roll, uh, uh, cleric, please. Okay. Uh, you get back uh, seven points of uh, points of health. You get seven health. Nice. Back. Okay. Yeah. Because I all my, well, actually, no, no, you only get five because that's not a healing spell. Okay. For all because all my all my healing spells, I get a plus two. Yeah, no, it's okay. not. It's just a, it's just a skill. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. My my mistake on that. Oh no, those are handy though. Those first eight kits are great. Um, uh, it uh, saves uh, it adds more uh, more heals to the party. It's a good thing. Uh, all right, yeah. so you get him bound up. Uh, he eventually wakes himself up uh, uh, down at the port. Uh, uh, the tiefling here, uh, uh, Laz, is uh, helping uh, the arrow. She, of course, you're not a medic of any kind, uh, so I'm assuming you're calling for some kind of medical help. Uh, eventually, someone does get over there to try to help deal with him. He's he's carted off, but uh, while this is going on, uh, this uh, schooner is backing up. It's being oared out quite powerfully. Uh, and as they're uh, doing, they put out the fire that you put up, uh, Les, uh, but it did cause damage. Uh, but they are just launching flaming arrows at every little rowboat they can see. Uh, this whole port is a flame. So. I, um, there's nothing I can do about their arrows. Um, I'm, am I out in the open to those arrows? No, you're, you're, they're not attacking people. They're attacking the boats. They're trying to uh, uh, mitigate, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, response. The, the, the pursuit, yeah. 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 Okay. Well, how, what's my what's my range to them? Um, I say you're at long range, and now if you have something that has a range like that, uh, your darts won't be able to do it. If you had a longbow, you'd be good. Uh, and probably some of your spells have range uh, long enough, I'd say. Well, I guess I'll do another firebolt uh, at the boat, see if I hit. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that'll get there. Uh, go ahead and give me a roll. It's eight. I missed. Okay. Uh, so the, the firebolt goes over, and there are other people shooting too. Uh, there's uh, plenty of guards who are shooting arrows. Uh, they're not on fire, of course, uh, but uh, they are shooting arrows and stuff. Uh, but uh, uh, they have a full... Uh, and you've seen this kind of tactic before. This is very much a Nord tactic. Uh, there's a bunch of these bandits up front with shields, and they've created kind of a turtle shell at the front of the uh, boat, and uh, most of those arrows are doing nothing. Uh, you, do, it, you do see, however... Uh, off to your uh, uh, off to your right, uh, you do see a uh, fairly large um, uh, sailing vessel uh, that is coming out of the inner port. Uh, let me come back over here and show real quick. Uh, the inner port over here is kind of more of the king's port and stuff like that. Uh, there is one that's just coming cresting around uh, the edge of the little uh, inlet here uh, and is in pursuit. Uh, now, of course, that's going to happen somewhere out at sea, and you guys aren't really going to be part of that. Uh, but um, uh, so this uh, combat of the attack is moved into the ocean, uh, which brings us back. Uh, the port is on fire. The people are scrambling uh, to try to get the port uh, put out. Uh, there are you do get a church in eventually uh, from calling out Slick, and uh, they come over to help uh, uh, Boran, uh, who is stable. Uh, he didn't go below zero, so there's no need for any kind of constitution rolls or anything like that. Uh, and I need to know whether you two guys in the plaza. Uh, uh, most of the town has moved toward the port by now, uh, but you guys have a captured werewolf. What do you want to do? Um, I'll look at him and say, can you, can you stand? Oh, yeah, uh, I can. Okay, we, we need we need to secure this, this beast. We'll call for the guard. Guard! See okay. if there's any, I mean, I know do that. Uh, uh, you do get some responses. Uh, uh, they have uh, the guard here is not huge, but there there's enough to to function for the town. A couple of guards do come over. He is awake by by the way now, uh, but he is well bound. Uh, he's not his strength is not uh, Superman, so he's not uh, uh, he's not breaking the bonds. Uh, but uh, he's not happy, and uh, um, uh, you have him in uh, custody. You have him captured. The guards come over and uh, help you with that. And uh, Here's what okay. it looks like. I, now. I, I grab him by the back of his head and I look at him and I say, You'll be answering some questions for us soon, Mongrel. 
very well. Now, you do notice uh, in his attempt to uh, uh, get out of his bonds, he has turned into wolf form, but it didn't help. Okay. He is still um, bound. I, I, I basically uh, ignite one of my hands and says, do, you, do we need to have another go? He just kind of growls and just turns his head away. He says nothing. As I thought. And I tell them to bind him at that once they get him where they're going, bind him even better. Mm-hmm. And when they think that he's bound well enough, bind him some more. Uh, they they say uh, they say to you, uh, sure enough, cleric, we'll put him in chains right away. Don't worry. As you will. And then and they're then gonna I get whiskey. At, uh, yes, I do apologize. Yeah. <laughs> ah. We gotta get a cask of whiskey. Mm. Um, and I'll look at the monk and I'll say, um, "Let's. Uh, we need to. We need to see what's happening down at the port." I agree. Let's see what we can do to help put out the fires. All right. Uh, so you guys spend uh, the next, uh, you know, hours actually helping and putting out fires and helping people. Uh, I'm assuming. I know the clerics and the monk are certainly going to be doing that. Uh, 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 Baron is doing nothing. Uh, other than <laughs> not dying. Uh, and uh, Tiefling, are you helping out or are you uh, just sticking with Baron? Uh, I would I would be uh, helping the wounded. Very good. Uh, so, you know, all this action is coming together and uh, uh, over the course of the morning, uh, uh, the rest of the morning, we're, uh, we're past lunch now uh, and uh, the whole town has come together. There's been a lot of um, uh, hospitalier type of actions that have happened uh, and um, uh, let me, uh, I don't want to play happy music, but let me find a different song here. Because uh, that was good for that, but we need something that's more fun. How about this one? Let's see. I cannot hear your music. No, you can't, but they can. No, that's that's too happy. Let me play this one. How about this one? <laughs> that's better. There we go. That's better. That's le- less happy. Excellent. Uh, all right. So, um, uh, but uh, there's a lot of hospitalier action that's going on, of course. Uh, people are bringing food and, and uh, trying to help. Uh, everyone's helping. This is a happy little town, really. Uh, they're not the richest people, but uh, they do help each other. And there's, there's, there's not a lot of stress and crime and stuff in this, this particular town. Um, and uh, so everyone's helping. And uh, uh, you do know that uh, now it's past lunch and you guys are healing and doing all the things you do. Uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, the monk is, is injured, but you've been patched up to a point, so you're helping the best you can. Uh, uh, eventually, uh, Baron does get uh, stabilized. Uh, Bob, could you give me a first aid uh, roll for him, please? Not from you, yeah. but just make the roll. Yeah. Huh, okay. Uh, you get back four. Oh, okay. <laughs> Right, so you're up to four health. So you're able to move around, but you are certainly sore and injured. Uh, you did have a, a, a an arrow, uh, a bolt, actually, very, very close to your heart. So uh, I'm sure you don't feel great. Um, but uh, nevertheless, uh, this is what's going on. And after lunch, around, uh, we'll say, 2 o'clock uh, in the afternoon, uh, the uh, uh, the Thane's uh, ship comes back. It's badly damaged. Uh, it's uh, one of its mass is completely broken. It has holes in it. It's smoldering. There's no open fire, but it obviously was on fire. Uh, but it limps back into port. Matter of fact, it's so badly damaged it can't even get around the uh, uh, the crest of this little peninsula here to get into the king's port or the thane's port. It actually comes into this uh, main port here and just uh, barely limps in. A couple of robots go out and help it uh, bring it to to the dock. Uh, but uh, and there's there there are many injured and some dead on board as well. Uh, now the overall death count uh, from this attack is not very high actually. Uh, most of the death is actually coming from uh, guardsmen uh, who are trying to defend the town. Uh, but uh, there's not a lot. Uh, we'll say maybe six dead uh, and with another two on the boat. So it's a it's not a huge loss of life. Although you know for a little town it, it certainly impacts it. Uh, but um, uh, uh, but the problem is, uh, the all account so far, uh, 12 women have been taken. And, Including uh, Lacey. Lacey. And, uh, which, which now you know because uh, Baran is the only one who saw that. Uh, but Lacey has been taken, of course, and everyone's whispering about that uh, because uh, the, the, the Thane uh, has been walking around the streets. He's been helping, bandaging. He's a, good, he's a very good man. Uh, which is why he was chosen. Because keep in mind, uh, this town is very much a mix of folk, 
uh, Nord. Uh, there's some Leeward Elves in here. Uh, and there's also some half orcs, not a lot, but a little bit uh, from the south. Uh, but uh, he's a well loved Thane because he's a good man and he's out here helping people. And uh, uh, everyone knows that his daughter was taken, and uh, he's but he's counting the, the townsfolk first. Uh, but everyone's kind of worried about him, and uh, you can see it on his face, obviously. Uh, but uh, we're coming into uh, the beginning uh, uh, of Twilight, uh, and uh, things have not in order, but they've been got under control. All the wounded, which was far more than injured, um, and then killed, sorry, uh, have been uh, dealt with. And, um, you know, the general spirit of the town is uh, anger and, uh, you know, frustration and uh, the confusion, I think, is the main thing going on. Now, uh, during all this process, you four find yourself together. Uh, Twilight is coming, uh, the town's uh, uh, taverns and... Uh, and uh, farmers and stuff that came in uh, uh, in the afternoon hearing what happened. A lot of the farmers came in uh, to help out. Uh, there's actually like a communal dinner going on uh, uh, in the town. Uh, they just kind of have like a, it's not a soup kitchen, but they're just kind of, everyone's helping each other. Um, but um, uh, you guys are together and you're having a, a bowl of potato soup uh, as you sit and uh, talk about the situation. So go ahead. Um. We'll we'll try to we'll try to uh, to get a uh, a table that's as far away from the main group as possible. Mm -hmm. We don't want to attract uh, too much attention um, to uh, to uh, Zalia. Z sure, Zalazia. that's fine. Right. And a lot of people and, are just uh, in the street, are just kind of sitting down yeah. having a bowl of soup. I understand you just have a bunch of uh, you have a bunch of uh, you know kind of nun or sister type characters or just guardsmen who just walk around big old cauldrons and, and just soup putting out a bowl of soup for everyone to you know it's just one of those things uh but yeah you no problem uh, you find yourself away okay okay i'll say boran you need to use your connections find out who just attacked us and where did they take the women damn well <laughs> i thought i thought for, yeah. i thought for a moment it was your friends the the crab apple crew but obviously not and if i don't and, I can't, one question I can't. though: Am I still am I still part of the? Uh, I'm not part of the the guild, am I? No. Uh, well, we you are. That, we, you are a forester. Since I'm the folk, yeah, no, no, no. Since uh, I'm folk hero. You yeah, are folk the, hero. Well, sure, but yeah. you are a local, right? Uh -huh. You are a, a forester, and you are a folk hero, so you most certainly have uh, connection more than these guys. Do. Uh, You're well yeah. beloved. Well beloved, um, yeah, and you just uh, you just you're you're. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to make sure it was it grew, didn't dude. Because I took an arrow. To the well, chest. because you defended Arm. the town, you're not a guardsman. Yeah. Um, in fact, some people probably saw thought saw them going. There he is. There's the hero. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there he floats away. He survived <laughs> a bolt from a werewolf. Took, yeah, your legend is growing. A bolt from a werewolf to save his love. Oh, the um, story. <laughs> <laughs> the of Ryan. Delirium. Um, yeah. as, as painful as the truth can be, I think it's far less expensive than deceiving ourselves. This enemy is far more powerful than we may be able to handle on our own. But we may be able to spy on him and see what we can get back to oh, oh, those people. Don't well, what did we learn about from the, the How do you prisoner? From... Uh, you haven't learned <laughs> anything from the prisoner. They turned him over to the guards. Have you thought of going to speak with the um... Oh, absolutely. But, uh... Will the thing let you go? And, uh, uh, it's possible, cons considering that we have the, uh, the town's local hero with us. It's, it's very possible, considering their relationship. And also because we were the ones who captured him, maybe he'll uh, give us that privilege to question sure. or at least get information from what they've mm -hmm. ascertained from this beast. Yeah, true. And as yeah. far as uh, as far as uh, you know, you said that. Uh, I'll talk to going, like I said that uh, going yeah. after them might might be more than we can handle ourselves. But uh, path to wisdom is led with uh, littered with foolish choices. So mm -hmm. I'm all for going out into the world and finding this finding this lot. Is there a way to follow a trace? Maybe across the water too. Any of you have um, 
knowledge of someone who has the ability to give us uh, well, we, a talisman a, to follow. Not that I'm aware of, but we do have a, a scout from the area. I look at uh, look at the, the hero. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, well, I could talk to the Thane. He, he knows he knows me, and he knows that I, I I share feelings for his daughter, and maybe he can he can guide us in the direction of some sort of uh, pro- to procure some sort of. Uh, talisman or to see to get information from the werewolf he, he would be able to give us access if we talk well about i've him. heard that i've heard the thing is still in town helping people let's see what we can do to to help mm-hmm. them and maybe and use that as an opportunity to speak with them uh now that if the soup has to... been going around and uh stuff or stuff is generally under control uh the thing is not in town right now <laughs> yeah <Not. laughs> um i think i think i think we'd be better served to just uh approach the uh, those who are who are currently de- detaining the the mongrel and speak to him directly. Mm-hmm. Yep, I agree with this. Let's go do that. Okay. Uh, so you guys head over, and of course, uh, if we go back to our map here and uh, we take a look, uh, we can see that uh, uh, the uh, um, more than likely uh, the prisoner is probably being held held in the uh, citadel. Uh, which is up on the hill. It's actually a Mott and Bailey is what it really is. Uh, but that's certainly where a prison would be held. Uh, there is kind of a jail in town, kind of. Uh, but uh, all it ever really gets used for is if people are too drunk and just let them sleep it off. It's not much of a jail, really. It's more like a locked uh, storage room. Uh, but uh, uh, there is an actual uh, uh, holding area in the Mott and Bailey, you would assume. Uh, you've probably never been there. Well, actually, Baron might have been. I'm sure he has been, actually. Uh, so you guys head over to the uh, eastern gate. And, of course, the guard is very heavily guarding that area. Uh, but as you approach, uh, you see the captain of the guard. Uh, and uh, his name is uh, his name is Lim. Uh, and, uh, of course, you know who he is, uh, Baron. And as you approach, uh, he walks over to you. And he has a sad and dour look on his face. Uh, he puts his hand on your shoulder, Baron, and he says, uh, Stiff upper lip, son. We will find her. Thank you. That means a lot. Can you help like... us? <laughs> uh, we, we, need, we need to talk to the, the werewolf to get some information. Hopefully we can find out where they're camped. Mm, well, he is being questioned, so let us take you to him. Uh, and uh, he looks back over uh, uh, to the side and he sees the cleric and the monk and he says, uh, well fought to you. Good capture. The only one of the day. Please follow. So you guys follow the captain. Uh, you go across this uh, bridge here, across the uh, uh, the uh, mouth of this uh, uh, small river that's dumping into the ocean, and you guys head into the Mott and Bailey. Uh, and uh, as you guys come in, they take you to the kind of dungeon area. It's not much of a dungeon, really. This is not that type of place. Uh, but they do have a holding area, of course. Uh, and uh, as you guys come down, you see there uh, there is a... Um, gated palisade type of uh, uh, construction that has been uh, not palisade um, uh, I can't my, my brain left me but there's there's a there's a cell here uh, and you see many of the guards are, uh, are standing around kind of chatting outside they're very angry uh, you hear various uh, comments of what they would like to do uh, with this prisoner uh, but uh, the ones who are inside the cell with the Thane talking to this uh, 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 now uh, uh, back in human form uh, are much more calm and uh, professional about their conversation. Uh, the guard stands outside and waits and just looks back and kind of gives you a, like a hand down thing, meaning just be patient. Uh, now, mm-hmm. as you guys are waiting, you're listening to the thing is asking the kind of standard questions you would expect. Uh, he says, uh, why are you here to get women? Where are you from? Go to hell and die. You know, various things like that. Uh, the Thane is asking many, many questions of that sort, and uh, the werewolf is being completely uncooperative. Of course. Of course. They don't even know his name. Um, we'll just, uh, well, I'm just going to wait there until they uh, either they're done or we're uh, given the okay to come in. Uh, well, uh, they do finish with what they're doing, and uh, but it's completely professional. 
there was no violence put to the werewolf whatsoever. Uh, the Thane leaves, and of course the guards that were in with him leave with him. Uh, he comes out, and as he does, he sees Baran there in front of him. And uh, he's, uh, you can see uh, a bit of emotion wanted to wipe across his face, but he sucks it up immediately. Uh, he comes over to you and he says, uh, uh, Young Baran, you fought well today. Are you doing well? Are you okay? I'll be fine once I heal up. And it was actually these brave men and this mystery one that did most of the fighting. But we, we wanted to make an effort to save... The women, including Lacey, uh, would you be opposed to us uh, interrogating the prisoner? Well, you can have at it, I suppose. Uh, he's not giving us anything. It would be nice to get information for, of course, as you probably can tell, our, our ship uh, lost them at sea, so we don't even know where they are. Uh, we're going to, of course, put something together to try to save our ladies, and uh, you're more than welcome to be part of that, of course. Uh, but uh, I am restricted, uh, shall we say. I will leave you to it. He leaves. His guards yeah. follow him. Uh, now, uh, you guys find yourself in a little bit of a difficult situation uh, because uh, basically the the guardsmen uh, they're in here. Then not the not the royal guard that just left, but well, not royal guard, but you know the Thane guard. Um, uh, they want to just take pieces off of it. I mean, they're pissed, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so mm -hmm. uh, if you want to get in there and talk to him, you're going to have to either get in line, or someone's going to have to uh, put them in line. <coughs> um. <laughs> Uh, I have a 17 charisma plus 3 plus 5 intimidation. <laughs> I was going to say, somebody better step up because my charisma is not going to yeah, handle this. I kind of was waiting yeah, for the uh, the tiefling to step up. Yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. um, what should I roll for? Uh, well, uh, yeah, we'll do that after. You go ahead and do your, 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 your bid first. Yeah. Good watchman. I would like to speak to the prisoner alone. They um, no, well, hold on a second. Uh, they they kind of look at you sideways. They don't know who you are. Uh, they know you're a tiefling, and they probably haven't seen many. But like I said, like again, they probably haven't seen a gnome either. Uh, but um, uh, they kind of look at you, and they're like, uh, "Yeah, we appreciate your help today, but uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna deal with them first. Well, let me open my cloak and show them myself. Uh, I am. Oh, red scan and I have zigzagged markings and I'm in a gold bikini and um, oh my god gold bikini what I'm this is I'm all... fairly in, this I'm is, fairly this intimidated. is a, a temperate climate that is uh, near winter what are you talking about she's a tiefling <laughs> she's always hot okay um yeah my character is gonna turn away slightly and just kind of uh yeah, great. Right. <laughs> while, they're, while they're turning away, I slip past them. All right, go ahead and make your uh, d20 roll. Okay, one second. Cat. <laughs> go away, cat. Um, oh, before you do that, um, as you're walking by, I'll just kind of reach back and just, like, touch your arm slightly. And uh, I, will ca I will cast Guidance on you. It gives you uh, 1d4 plus 1 to any of your ability checks. Okay. Oh, <laughs> crap. Natural 20. Take another fate point, please. That's two what? for you today. Wow. Um, Damn it, cat. God. Sorry. That's okay. My cat's up in my face. Now, this yeah, music I'm, I'm... that I'm playing is certainly not appropriate for this scene. Uh, so no. uh, let me just stop the music altogether. Um, uh, let, here we go. Chester, okay. if you want to give them a chance to, uh, like, maybe... De to detect what I was doing. I just kind of mutter the enchantment, the, the cantation under my he breath. He rolled a natural 20 on a charisma check. Well, well, I'm, I'm they are the, not paying yeah. attention to you at all. You do not <laughs> <Okay>. exist. All <laughs> that exists yeah, is large, red, <laughs> luscious tits. Okay? Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> and Baran is just going... <laughs> Someone's playing saxophone music. What are you doing? <laughs> Knock it off. Uh, all right. Uh, but uh, yeah, you have their absolute, complete uh, attention and uh, they're very happy to let you do whatever the hell you want. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, ma Certainly, ma'am. So, um, 
in that vein, I need to go talk to the the werewolf. Do the the brethren follow me, or do they stay outside? So I'd imagine you. they followed you. Yeah, oh, I follow you, and I I nod at the the guards as they walk by and say, "The All path right. is littered do with." Do I food. start with the questions, or do you want to? Or uh, them start? Uh, I think we should have just a really small like we kind of huddle together to get a plan of attack because mm -hmm. I have I have two ideas which is you know of course one is that we you know you do your your charisma and if that doesn't work you know you do your torture thing or if we can figure out a way to let him go and we can figure out where he goes to figure out where their camp is there are options you know? that's true uh, but so, um, uh, what i would suggest in this case uh, there's another mechanic that comes into play here uh you can have uh slick make the role because he is your charisma character uh everybody here has their own strengths you got your healer you got your tank uh you have your roguish character and of course you have your charisma uh sink uh that is the uh, the tiefling uh so uh what you can do is you can uh, let the the tiefling lead the conversation and you guys can be part of the conversation if you succeed uh in your role your charisma roles you can add bonuses to his role uh this is uh this is a joint or team role uh type of uh, effect i like it i think it's a nice addition so yeah. uh but you need to make a decision are you guys going to try to sweet talk him or are you going to try to uh have him accidentally escape i think we should start with the interrogation and if this doesn't play out then we'll let him go they'll do the accidental yeah. escape let's sure. run this track first with the tiefling trying to mesmerize him if that doesn't work um, start burning the foul beast. Okay. Oh, I right. mean, I mean, coercing him through extreme measured means. All right. Well, uh, then go ahead and role play it out. Uh, uh, you need to have the tiefling start the conversation, uh, but you guys can interject during that as well because this is a joint uh, role. So go ahead. Okay. I'm going to stand at the back corner, um, trying to look as menacing as possible with my whole five foot ten self <laughs> now as although you, i did set up fire so um he is uh in chains but as you guys enter uh he seems irked by the whole situation and he is transformed into his wolf form uh which of course you guys can see right here so the conversation begins tiefling oh shit Sorry, I was goofing around, and I okay. Okay. Um. By the way, that um, what, what? that uh, guidance that I cast on you that gives you uh one d four to any of your ability checks. I mean, not 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 that one. What was it? Okay. Guidance throw. or yeah, guidance. guidance. Yeah, guidance gives you one d four on any on any ability check. So um, uh, just for that, that lasts for uh, yeah, that lasts well. No, it lasts for one minute. Oh, it does. Well, then get to it then. All right. Yeah. So you want to get going like ASAP. My good Lacanthrope, I see that you are bound and probably doomed. However, maybe there's abilities within the four of us to effect a release for you, or maybe even make your life a little bit easier. How about you tell us one little thing, just one, and we'll go from there. One thing. All right, there we go. <laughs> that, that I must say, slick. That is incredibly creepy. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, so, who's going to add? Who's going next to add to this uh, this uh, charisma roll? All right, uh, friggin' Boran. In a pit of a fit of anger and hormones and dumbness slams uh, in front of him. Because uh, is there a table or is he just like in a chair? Uh, no, he's uh, he's uh, kind of in this the position you see here in the photo. Uh, he's chained. Okay. Uh, but uh, 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 so he's not exactly. But he's okay, kind of so, squatted. So down. I do it like a, a mad hissy fit stomp, and I go, "Where the hell is Lacey?" All like stupid and just outburst. That's perfect. Cleric? I'm just watching this whole thing, trying not to speak, because I know I have a tendency to kind of uh, come off wrong. All right. Monk? Um, um, 
Hold on. Let's see. I would say, I'd say, when is this the only village that you attacked? How many have you been attacking? Where are you coming from? He looked at you and he smiled and says, how's the gut? I, um, <laughs> when he says that, I actually uh, like I, I actually cast uh, the the flame kind of from my hand for a second. I said, "Sure, how's your body?" He just grimaces at you. Uh, but uh, all right, go ahead and make your roll. Uh, uh, um, uh, Bill and uh, and uh, Bob are not helping. Uh, so basically, uh, <laughs> no, uh, Baran, make a charisma roll for me, please. It's a D20, dude. No, no. I just accidentally pressed it, so it was two D20s. 13 plus oh. two, 15. All right, 15. Very nice. Uh, so uh, go ahead, Slick, and make your roll. Now, you do have that, um, uh, what is that, a plus 1D4 to his roll? Yeah, 1D4. The guidance. So you have, uh, so make your roll. Uh, you got to get a D4, and you got to get a plus 2. Uh, so uh, that's a lot of bonuses. Go ahead. As you can see, natural 20. Jesus, dude! What in the hell? I'm sorry. That's three. <laughs> wow, it straight up is. Um, so <laughs> take another fate point, uh, and um. God dang! All right, I have so... one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'll transfer it over to your debit account. Wow, <laughs> craziness! Uh, because you know, keep in mind. Each one of these, uh, I'm going to do this at the end uh, here. I'll probably do a post-show. Uh, but each one of those D20s is 50 experience uh, times your level, by the way. Uh, so you've already gained 150 experience points before we even get into conversation. Just so you know. Yeah. Uh, so ridiculous. Uh, but anyway, it, it is what it is. And, it, and of course, it works out. Uh, so basically, um, uh, he's, uh, this is what he says. He says, <laughs> fine. Doesn't matter anyway. You can go to your slaughter. They'll definitely destroy you, idiots. Uh, and uh, he he goes through a long-winded explanation of how great they are and how they're going to take over the world and Melar is the best and yada, yada, yada. Uh, but in the end, he does tell you exactly where they are. Uh, they are actually uh, have a little camp uh, just down to the southwest of uh, uh, Horst, uh, which is down the coast from you guys, uh, uh, in a little uh, little cove. Now, if you guys see the map I have up here, uh, then you can... Uh, let me bring it over here so you can see it. I don't know if I can do that. No, it's not letting me. Uh, but anyway, it's just to the southwest of Horst. Uh, he shows you it's a little cove uh, down the coast from you guys. It's probably... I don't know, I'd say 10 kilometer, uh, ten miles away. Not that far, right? Um, and uh, he shows you exactly what it is, and he laughs because he he, he just uh, he thinks it's going to be funny just imagining how you're going to get slayed and barbecued. So, how many of your mongrel brethren are there? Uh, he says, uh, he says, more than enough. He says, 50 plus. Oh, poor thing. You can't count. Ooh. Oh. He growls at you. a good you. crew he is. I shall visit you when we return. They will give you a reward. He's not happy Believe about it, look- <laughs> but he thinks he thinks he's won the situation because he doesn't think uh, you guys can handle the uh, handle the problem. But you, you know, D twenty, uh, uh, natural twenty is a natural twenty. Uh, you definitely got it, and uh, uh, you you know exactly where they are. So awesome. Uh, now uh, I'm sure you were going to have you guys go and talk to the Thane and do all those kind of conversations, uh, but we're going to do that next time because uh, we're at the end sure. of our show uh, for okay. today. Uh, but uh, interesting, uh, interesting introduction to our our D and D campaign here. Uh, you guys got any thoughts? We're going to um, kill some werewolves, <laughs> or I made a couple of misses, right? and I made a couple of three natural twenties. So I, I think I'm all right. Yeah, no, you're, good. you're nope. definitely doing well, Bro. man. Oh, yeah, holy crap! Man. Three three twenties in one game. Good God. Yeah. Yeah. That's... Well, it's probably not going to happen again. <laughs> You never know. Some people are lucky like that. Uh, but uh, you guys like the way the story's uh, developing so far? That's cool. Yeah. It's really intense. 
Awesome. I dig uh, it. All right. Well, I uh, hope you guys in the chat have enjoyed it as well. Uh, this has been a lot of fun. Uh, we're uh, definitely looking forward to doing this every week, and uh, we're going to let this run until it runs its course, right? Uh, we're going to see how these guys develop, and uh, uh, who knows where we'll go with it. But uh, uh, I don't know if they had enough to make uh, first level, but I bet you they're close. Uh, to make second level, sorry. Uh, but uh, we're going to deal with that offline. But uh, we do appreciate you guys being here. Uh, do keep in mind that tomorrow, of course, is the um, uh, normal show at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Comic News Today. But we also have Blacklist Universe. Uh, it's pro edition uh, drawn and quartered. And uh, definitely go over there and support our winner from last week. Uh, we appreciate you guys. And uh, yeah, later. <laughs>